Welcome back. This is our second episode on cancer, fenbenzidol. Here is the chemistry of fenbenzidol. What is fenbenzidol? It is a benzimidazole anthelminic agent to treat parasitic infections in dogs. In humans, it is used as an anti-parasitic agent. It binds to beta tubulin in parasites, causing microtubule destabilization and disrupts cellular function, affecting energy management of parasites. And just to explain that in layman's terms, the way that cancer cells work is that they bind and they replicate, affecting the energy management of the parasites will target intestinal parasites and help to destroy them. History of fenbenzidol. Diagnosed with cancer in 2016, Joe Tippins began using a protocol for cancer, consisting of the following. 222 milligrams of fenbenzidol, vitamin E supplements, CBD oil, curcumin isolated from turmeric, and an 1100 clinical trial of participants, Joe was the only patient that was cancer free. Properties of fenbenzidol. Fenbenzidol has been found to inhibit glucose intake, resulting in reduced lactate levels. It can serve as a treatment to drug-resistant cancer cells. It disrupts energy metabolism, impairs proteasmal function, and inhibits glucose, glucose powers tumor cells. GLUT1 transporter is found in 99% of patients with squamosis cell carcinoma and 50% of patients with adenocarcinoma. Fenbenzidol induces mitochondrial translocation of P53, inhibiting this GLUT transporter expression and preventing glucose uptake in cancer cells. It induces apoptosis in cancer cells. It acts as a microtubule destabilizing agent, preventing cancer cells from mitosis and causing cell death. Orally, fenbenzidol induces cytotoxicity and effectively blocks inhibiting cancer. Fenbenzidol causes oxidative stress and activates the MEK36P38MAPK pathway, inhibiting cancer cell proliferation and enhancing apoptosis. It inhibits the progression of bleomycin-induced lung fibrosis. The Joe Tippins Cancer Protocol. Joe was diagnosed in 2016 with small cell lung cancer. By 2017, it had completely spread throughout his body, and in spite of all these conventional treatments, he was given no hope to live. A veterinarian told him about an animal bleed warmer that was being used for cancer. He developed his own protocol, and today he's still cancer-free. Number one, the animal dewormer Panicure or Fenbendazole. He started taking this daily, still takes it today. A standard animal cancer dose would be 50 milligrams for 10 pounds of body weight daily. And number two, 95% curcumin. It's isolated from tumor. Animal dose is 100 milligrams for 10 pounds of body weight daily. And the theracumin here, it's a good option. And then number three, cannabidiol. Joe takes this daily as well. He gives it sublingual or just under the tongue. The standard animal dose of the cannabidiol is three milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily. If you like tips like these, I encourage you to get a copy of my free book. Link is in the bio. Comparing fenbenzidol to vitamin B17, which was the first cancer treatment of our series. Unlike B17, venbenzidol has a high safety margin and low toxicity. Although vitamin B17 is eaten in the Hunza Valley and the people there live to 120 years, in 1971 and 72, there was a story in which a couple ate an overnight brew of apricot seeds that led to cyanide poisoning. No toxicity has been found in animals above the recommended dosage of fenbenzidol. Oxfendazole, metabolite in fenbenzidol, is well tolerated in humans. Water solubility. According to a paper by Anti Cancer Research, a significant challenge in using fenbenzidol is its low water solubility and bioavailability. Improving the water solubility is essential as it would reduce the amount of drug needed to reach the same therapeutic effect. With this increase in solubility, fenbenzidol can also meet the requirements for use as a systemic anti cancer drug. Several studies have investigated various vehicles to overcome this low solubility limit. Among the discussed vehicles for increasing the bioavailability of oral fenbenzidol, let's discuss dimethyl sulfoxidide, salicyclic acid, and methyl B cyclodextrin, DMSO, and DNTC. 
and Crimo 4 mix in a 1 to 3 to 2 by 2 ratio, including DMSO, NMP, and tween 80, are highly promising solvents that warrant further exploration. DMSO inhibits several cytochrome P450 subtypes in a concentration-dependent manner since 2C19 and 3A4 are known CYP450 subtypes that metabolize, it, that metabolize fenbendazole. Inhibiting these enzymes would cause fenbendazole to stay in circulation at higher concentration for longer periods. And as you can see here, the FDA approves cancer drugs with various water solubility Abraxin is poorly soluble, Doxol is poorly soluble, and Nano-HHI is also poorly soluble. The FDA's guidance on BCS classification is crucial for drug development. Despite that, the success of fenbendazole is the following. In four reported cases, it's led to reduction in tumor size. In two cases, patients experience drug-related hepatic dysfunction, and in both cases, Patients' liver function recovered rapidly upon discontinuation. And just to break down the science, a study was published in which fenbendazole was used for CRC or collectoral cancer, which is the third common cancer diagnosed and the second leading cause of death in the world. In terms of fenbendazole, a compound used after three days of incubation, the IC50 values of SNUC5 cells or the cancer cells treated with fenbendazole and albendazole were 0.5 and 0.4 respectively. When incubated with or 1 UM of fenbendazole and albendazole, SNU cells were S42.24 plus or minus 2.71% and 38.18 plus or minus 2.01% when incubated with fenbendazole and albendazole respectively. Cell viability of SNUC5F for cells or these cancer cells was 65.66 plus or minus 1.83% and 67.57 plus or minus 1.58% when treated with fenbendazole and albendazole respectively, which further decreased to 30.79 plus or minus 2.35% and 39.78 plus or minus 1.40% at 10 UM concentrations. In layman's terms, when treated with fenbendazole, there was a higher effect in attacking the cancer cell versus albendazole. And based on that study, they concluded that it has anti-proliferative effects on both CRC cells. Fenbendazole was more effective than albendazole. Fenbendazole induced cell cycle arrest at G2M phase with increased P21 expression in colorectal cancer cells. Cell death analysis showed a significant increase in the fraction of aptosis and necrosis found in CRC cells compared with a vehicle-treated cells. Fenbendazole arrests cell cycle at G2M phase and induces aptosis via P53, P21 pathways in SNUC5 and SNUC5-5 for cells. Again, in layman's terms, these are cancer cells. The treatment that the patients used for fenbendazole was the following. This cheap alternative required one gram orally of fenbendazole one time three days consecutively mixed with a four days off treatment. Some of the roadblocks to fenbendazole are improving the solubility of fenbendazole and its affordability indicate why traditional medicine does not suggest this cancer treatment. Despite anti-cancer effects in fenbendazole and collectoral cancer cells.